since Marika has a neurological disability like you. She has no disability. Auditory processing? That's code for I can't stand thinking my daughter's not perfect. She gets below average marks in school because she's below average. Nick, shut up. I'm not saying you're stupid. Your mother's not the sharpest crayon in the box, and she does great. I thought these insults could not get any worse, but the sharpest crayon in the box. This man's insults are so savage. He sent his wife back to primary school. I'm very excited to be reacting to House MD Season 5, Episode 17, The Social Contract. On this channel, we are reacting to all 177 House videos, and this will be Episode 108. Let's see if we can get the diagnosis before House does, as a doctor working in London. We're going to have to get over the spear public speaking before the book bestseller. bestseller. Well, that's not gonna happen. Why would Northrop even publish it if it's only going to tank? Obviously, Elaine wouldn't want to offend you. I'm, I'm sorry. I don't, I don't know why I said that. Anyone, what you have done is art. So is folding paper into animal shapes, but you don't expect to make a living off it. Please, be quiet. <gasps> it's Phineas Gage. Most famous case study in medical history. But he does have frontal lobe disinhibition, just like Gage. MRI show anything? Nothing. A well-placed tumor in the nasal cavity eroding into the brain could do the damage. We're here for another test. Sorry about that. You don't look sorry. Should I want a doctor who's excited about how sick I am? I'm not. It's too bad it's not your nose. Lots more room to maneuver. there's more room to maneuver this guy is original savage no wonder this episode's called the social contract they seem to be comparing him to phineas gage but who even is that he's a very famous psychology case study referred to as the man who began neuroscience in the mid 1800s phineas gage was 25 when he was working in a railroad bed in vermont he was packing explosive powder into a hole with an iron rod and it detonated, sending the 40 inch long, one inch wide rod like a javelin towards his head. It went through his left cheek, into his brain, out through the top of his skull and landed almost 100 feet away. Gage didn't just survive though, he was able to talk and walked to a nearby cart to go see a doctor. Even toward the evening, he was still conscious and able to speak the names of his colleagues. He also said he didn't want any visitors because he'd be back at work in a day or two. He then ended up in a 10 day coma from a brain infection, but it's still pretty incredible that he survived and had good ongoing function, except he was no longer the same Phineas Gage. He was described as fitful, irreverent, and grossly profane, showing little deference for his fellows. Seems like he was the first ever influencer. He also couldn't hold down a job, so it fits pretty well. Interestingly though, his skull and the iron tamping rod are still on display in Harvard Medical School today. Either way, it's been 160 years since Phineas Gage was with us, so what could cause our patient's symptoms? He's got disinhibition, nosebleeds, and a normal MRI scan. His behavior has to indicate there's something wrong with the brain, as this isn't just confusion or delirium, it's personality change. If this guy came to be in the ED, the first thing we'll be doing next is a lumbar puncture to check for infection. The number one diagnosis in real life here would be encephalitis. Maybe he had an upper respiratory infection that made him vulnerable that caused the nosebleeds. Maybe he used his power as editor, decided to make a story of his own and got himself herpes. Either way, it would show up with a little of that brain juice we call CSF. We could also test it for antibodies, check its cloudiness, whether there are high white cells or even weird fungi, but where'd the fun in that be? Either way, we're gonna need more clues, and I have a feeling they're not in Phineas's nose. God, that honker really is huge, isn't it? No nasal cancer. Always led me to believe you were one of a kind. Luckily, jerkiness is a temporary condition for this guy. No, it's not. There's damage somewhere in his brain. Go find it. House page? Whoa, I would do her in a minute with fudge and a cherry on top. He has frontal lobe disinhibition. Your tush is like the pistons in a Ferrari. But that guy can only tell the truth. He prefers your body to that of a smoking young hottie. He didn't call me attractive. He cast me in his mental porno. <sighs> That's what attractive means. It means I'm attracted to you sexually. Look at that. It's a spot on the cingulate gyrus. It's not lighting up. Could be neurosarcoidosis. At least it's treatable. So we give him steroids, and if we're right, we should start seeing his symptoms improve within half a day. House's status as biggest jerk in the building is really being challenged here, and he's loving every minute of it. This patient told his wife he went on a breast cancer run because he knew she wouldn't sleep with him if he didn't, told 13 he's imagining her naked, and cuddy that her tush is like the pistons in a Ferrari. If this guy stays married, well then we're seeing the Boeing 747 replaced 
by fleets of flying pigs before you can say couples therapy. Interesting though that 13 was saying she doesn't think her involvement in the patient's mental fantasy means he finds her attractive. Foreman thinks differently though, so why is that? Well, the science of attraction for males and females is vastly different. Men may decide in the first seven seconds that they want to sleep with a woman purely based on her physical appearance. White and colleagues in 2021 found that women do value physical build as well. But what seems to be much more important is intelligence, trust, and emotional connection. Interesting seeing it all plotting neatly on a graph. It's theorized that these differences are due to the fact that men have a very small investment in having a child, simply the time it takes for a forage between the sheets. Women need to deal with pregnancy, lactation, time investment it takes in nurturing a child, and reductions in income. That means they have to be more selective if they're going to achieve reproductive success. All of this explains why an attractive man doesn't quite have the same pull as an attractive woman as it takes a bit more time and chit chat to figure out if the man possesses the other qualities that a female desires. But whether 13 is flattered or not won't change what's going on in our man's brain. So what could that be? The team mentioned that he has a spot that isn't lighting up on the Singulate Gyrus on their fMRI. So what does that mean? Well, the cingulate gyrus is a pretty long area that deals with processing emotions and regulating behavior. So damage here could explain why he has the charm of a piranha on meth, but what could lead to that damage? Foreman thinks it could be neurosarcoidosis, but that usually presents more gradually and is about 10 times more common in African Americans. It also presents first in the lungs, skin and eyes, which our guy seems to be all right with. It could be a ton of other things as well, like vasculitis, which could also explain the bleeding in the nose, infections like histoplasmosis or cancers like lymphoma or a microtumor that spread from somewhere else. It's good they're doing a therapeutic trial, but I still can't believe they haven't taken a sample of that sweet cerebral squash known as CSF. Question for you smart people. Some people with base of skull fractures have tasted their own CSF. So what do you think it tastes like? Sweet and metallic, salty and metallic, or bitter and metallic? Answers down below, and I'll give it to you at the end of the video. No one's ever mentioned your nose before. You tell me it suits my face. It does. Maybe, maybe that's just the social contract. I thought you said the steroids were gonna help him. KG says heart's fine. It's gotta be the kidneys. His daughter has a neurological condition. Test for peripheral nerve damage. When he's got brain damage, he's likely to have peripheral nerve damage no matter what. Test the daughter. She should be feeling something by now. Marika? You're burned. Why didn't you tell me it started to hurt? Why didn't it help daddy? It means you were wrong about diabetes. I still think it's the endocrine system. Maybe I just got the wrong gland. I have never played racquetball with Wilson. If you were really a racquetball player, you know that you're holding a squash racket. They'll cut her to do a thyroid reuptake scan. I'm not going anywhere until you explain why my daughter has a bandage on her hand. Since Marika has a neurological disability like you. She has no disability. Auditory processing, that's code for I can't stand thinking my daughter's not perfect. She gets below average marks in school because she's below average. Nick, shut up. I'm not saying you're stupid. Your mother's not the sharpest crayon in the box, and she does great. I thought these insults could knock any worse, but the sharpest crayon in the box. This man's insults are so savage, he sent his wife back to primary school. He mentioned something interesting though, almost that his wife wants the disabled label for her child, but is that true? Well, there are appropriate things that come with being disabled in the US and UK and many other places, including disability benefit payments and not having to work. The vast majority of people use this system appropriately, but there are a small percentage who try to game this status through manipulative techniques. One lady in the UK got 33,000 pounds in disability benefits for herself and her son. She told the government she could walk no more than 20 meters without a stick and her sons were stuck in wheelchairs. Private investigators saw a different version of events when one son was weightlifting freely in the gym and they both went on an adventure holiday to Canada. The mother also got caught walking freely through a supermarket and spent nine months in prison. These are the stories we hear about. There must be so many others that we don't. There is another benefit to having a label like that and that is having a reason for inaction. In his book, The Courage to Be Disliked by Ichiro Kishimi, he says that it's common for people to have hidden dreams and desires that we cling onto the idea that if we just tried, 
then we would be successful. We love having reasons for not trying because if we put in effort and don't get the outcome we want, then we have to welcome this idea that we may not have the inner talent that we thought we did. This external label or many others like blaming politics or the environment that you were brought up in helps us to justify where something isn't possible when it is. Look at Stephen Hawking who was paralyzed by ALS after a diagnosis at 21 and still made discoveries about the origins of the universe and black hole radiation. Or Ralph Braun who founded the Braun company after being born with muscular dystrophy and is one of the largest manufacturers of wheelchair accessible vehicles. Or Stevie Wonder who was born blind and had his first record label signing at 11 and became a legend. Once we realize that so many of our limitations are from this nugget on our shoulders, the limits of what becomes possible experience their own big bang. Now we know our patient's kidneys have seen better days, his sugar levels are normal and they're checking his thyroid instead, which are all pretty vague, so let's get more clues. This is why I told your mother to keep you at home. I didn't want you here. Marika, lungs are full of fluid. We need to get it out. I need 200 milligrams of prosomide and two milligrams of morphine stat. I think we should be around each other as little as possible right now. This is pathetic. His wife rescues dogs, among others, a big Rottweiler who's taken over the house. Starting on doxycycline. He improves. Well, no, we were right. I told Wilson you sent me to get information. Top one's the one you're looking for. It's outgoing to jgonzalez at nymercy.net. Six articles by Gonzalez. Managing suicidal thoughts in oncology patients. Have you ever had reason to think he might be depressed? House is figuring out what's happening with Wilson. Our patient has fever. And we've just realized that the house is a shelter for stray dogs. It's a diagnostician's dream. We also know that our patient now has red eyes and fluid on the lungs. And the team think that it's something called Wiles disease. That does actually fit very well as it's caused by a bacteria of the Leptospira genus. It doesn't usually affect the brain though, which makes me think it could be something else. I have a theory. What if the patient isn't actually happy at home and all these thoughts he's saying are actually how he's truly feeling. He's been suppressing them all this time and to try and keep himself sane, he's been using antidepressants secretly. They could have had an interaction with the alcohol when this started or the dogs carried with them some anti-flea medicine or toxin which interacted with the antidepressant that caused it to build up in his system and has given him something called serotonin syndrome. It can cause your body temperature to skyrocket, changes in personality and even heart failure which leads up to buildup of fluid in the lungs. Treatment would be stopping the medicine, giving cryptohenidine which blocks serotonin production. I wonder what that feels like taking it without high serotonin. It's like the opposite of a happy pill. But also treated with sedatives like Valium and IV fluids. That has to be my first diagnostic guess. One point that isn't quite accurate. I need 200 milligrams of prosomide. 200 milligrams of furosemide. What are they trying to do? Dehydrate an ocean. Someone with flash pulmonary edema who's drowning in fluid in their lungs, the most I've ever seen given in one go is 80 milligrams. You can give an infusion of 200 milligrams, that's over the course of a day, not as a single push. Madness. The drug works by making you pee more than you usually would to get rid of excess fluid. So I hope this man has a catheter with an industrial sized container because pretty soon he's gonna need it. Infection's gone. The damage the infection did, you'll have to live with. You telling me you can't fix this? At least we can promise you won't get any worse. Get the hell out of my room. I'd like there to be one molecule of my life that goes unexamined by Gregory House. Nick Greenwald, here you're the guy in charge. You could operate. You could die. So I'm either better or dead? I'm okay with that. But I've worked hard to keep my mouth shut. Made my wife happy. Made my little girl happy. I want that back. Otherwise, it's no life. It's too near the brainstem. Nobody's gonna touch it. Your boss would. He's an egomaniac. If he ever finds a friend who's willing to put up with this crap, be lucky till he drives them away too. I'll see what I can do. I may have overreacted. Daniel Wilson. Once you get a name, it's amazing how much stuff you can learn on the phone. Even the cops took him to the Mercy Psych Ward. By tonight, he should be in shape to talk to me. I'll be in New York in a few hours. If I said that to anybody else, they'd say, don't worry, it'll all be all right. You wouldn't. Because it might all go horribly wrong. I want some company. Maybe she'll stop whining and cut me some slack now that I've risked my life. Maybe we were wrong about the problem. People who publicize important things are people who can't do important things themselves. Do you regret marrying me? 94.2. Sometimes. Echo says his heart is structurally fine. Temperatures still drop. Here's the thing. Frontal lobe changes will usually make a passionate, senseless personality change. Hookers and cocaine kind of situation. But this man 
dispassionately shares his deepest thoughts with no emotion attached to it. Thoughts that pretty much any witty person could have, but usually hold their tongue. One of the main things that separates humans from animals, we can feel and think one way while saying and acting another. Scientists attribute this to what we call higher cortical function, which is the outer part of our brains. This layer in humans is about three times the size as it is in chimpanzees. I can see why this is called the social contract though, since hiding these true thoughts is almost like an agreed kindness in the short term. There are huge cultural differences here though, as places like Germany or Finland are less likely to want to appease someone's feelings to sacrifice the truth. That's all in the name of benefiting society in the long term. None of this will sort out a patient's violation of the social contract and his newfound hypothermia though, so what could that be? Hypothermia could be a result of infection, but then it would respond at least partially to the antibiotics, which I guess it did for a bit. That means it probably is an infection, but has some resistance. So what infection could be associated with stray dogs, cause hypothermia, and all these other random systemic symptoms. Addison's disease caused by TB. His family collects stray dogs while he's in contact with homeless people, which matches the themes with Wilson's brother. And the TB first infects our patient's frontal lobe, changing his personality. Then it could hit his adrenal glands, causing them to spit out less stress hormone and sending him into crisis. It wouldn't be easily located on cultures and would need a special regimen of antibiotics to get rid of it. It's really well. I'm gonna have to go with TB with adrenal involvement for my second diagnostic guess. Question for you smart people. What country has the highest rates of TB? Congo, India, or China? Answers down below, and I'll give it to you at the end of the video. Do a full body scan. I would say it's full body scan. House isn't here. It's a density in the liver. Could be vascular malformation. Bought them with angiography. I'd like to do targeted scans with contrast and then embolize each one. One night, Danny called, crying, upset about something. I hung up. My mother called me the next day. Danny had run away and left his meds behind. Of course, he overreacted too. But his glucose was normal. Whoa, is that an epiphany I see before me? The team thought the patient had diabetes, and what if he did, but his pancreas was overcompensating for it by spitting out more insulin. Eventually, those insulin cells produced more than the body's glucose supply, and he keeps putting himself into hypoglycemic episodes, causing brain damage, hypothermia, and heart failure. It could explain his symptoms and would be fixable with some surgery to cut out, let's say, the insulinoma from his pancreas. Damn, if it's an insulinoma, that would be very, very, very spicy. Not sure how that fits with the social contract element, but it seems like these later titles are less of a clue to the diagnosis than they were before. So insulinoma has to be my third and final diagnostic guess. We are locked in. And have steroids, his glucose should have been elevated. He has Doge Potter syndrome. His fibroma is secreting human growth hormone, which acts like insulin, lowering his glucose. Take out the fibroma, you'll be a happy hypocrite again in no time. I have a uh, conspicuous nose. It suits your face. I've been offered a better position. I'd be coordinating cancer awareness walks in, in three cities. That's great. Oh, I was right about the tumor, wrong about the hormone. I had no chance on that. I've got to be honest, I've never heard of Doge Potter syndrome. In all fairness, though, it's IGF-1, which acts like like insulin, not growth hormone, which the team mentioned, even though they're related. I love how this episode toyed with the idea of truth versus lies and how there isn't always a good and a bad in it. Like the relationship between House and Wilson is better without the social contract, but try and implement it in a marriage and it falls to pieces rapidly. I'd say 7.8 out of 10 entertainment, 6.5 out of 10 accuracy, 7.4 out of 10 diagnosis. CSF or brain fluid is described as having a salty and metallic taste. India has the highest rates of TB, making up 28% of cases worldwide. This episode doesn't make full sense until you watch a previous one where a young boy is also a girl here. 